Hello, uh, dear children. Uh, this is uh, for class 8, and I am going to take biology class for all sections of class 8, that is 8A, 8B, and 8C. Alright? That means all sections of 8. So, we will be doing now chapter number 2. Alright? That is reproduction in plants so we have got reproduction in animals also but that is there in chapter number three so chapter number three we'll do later one first we'll do chapter number two where we find reproduction in plants all right reproduction uh, means you know it is a process by which the living organisms produce the new ones of their own kind as it is written as well, producing young ones of its own kind. That means reproduction is a process by which living organism produce the new ones of their own kind. Alright? So whether it is in the plant or in animals, the purpose of the reproduction is the same. That is to produce the new ones of their own kind. Alright? So now we'll go directly into the reproduction in plants. Alright? Reproduction in plants basically can be seen in two modes. Alright? That is asexual or vegetative reproduction. Or asexual or vegetative propagation. So this reproduction can also be termed as propagation. Asexual or vegetative propagation as well. Alright? Then we have got sexual reproduction. Asexual or vegetative reproduction and sexual reproduction all right so first we'll deal with the asexual or vegetative propagation or reproduction okay so asexual or your know, vegetative reproduction or propagation means the producing the new ones producing the new ones of their own kind from a single parent where the male and female parents are not involved. They produce it by using their sound parts, okay? By means of spore formation, by means of, you know, their stem, leaves, roots. So that way, when they produce the new ones, the process is called asexual or vegetative propagation. As it is written here also, that reproduction from a single parent using spores, parts like stem, leaf or roots. Okay? So that is asexual reproduction. So this sexual reproduction. So here in the sexual reproduction what we find is that the producing of that means the production of new ones from the seeds that is sexual reproduction which will be discussed afterwards in the next class. But today we will do the different methods of asexual or vegetative reproduction in this class. Alright? So methods of asexual or vegetative reproduction. Now, um, now we have now we have methods of asexual reproduction. Methods of asexual reproduction reproduction in plants all right methods of asexual reproduction in plants that means plants reproduce oxy asexually in many ways okay so like uh, we have uh, by by many fission binary fission okay we have binary fission by binary fission binary fission in which a single parent or single organism which is a, a single parent you know you know is split into two individual ones okay that is by splitting into two to daughter Organisms into two daughter ones into two daughter ones 
into two daughter ones. Alright? So example. Example like bacteria. Amoeba, etc. Alright? By splitting into two daughter ones. That means uh, like bacteria, amoeba usually unicellular organism, you know, reproduces by means of binary fission in which a single parent splits into two daughter ones or into two daughter cells. Okay, so let me draw it. You know, this bacteria, how they do it. Suppose this is the bacteria. Okay, so this bacteria will mature. This nucleus will slowly start dividing. In the second stage, what happens is that this nucleus will be divided into two nuclei. Alright, slightly here it starts also dividing. That means cytoplasm also starts dividing now. Then in the second stage, what happens is here this cytoplasm is almost divided into two daughter. Uh, organisms, then finally in the last stage what happens is the two bacteria are formed. Alright, so this is called binary fission. From one organism, from one parent, the two daughter organisms or daughter offspring are formed. So this is called, you know, binary fission. In the same way, amoeba also reproduces, which is asexual reproduction by binary fission. Then second we have second we have by body by body by body okay reproduction reproduction by by uh, by bird formation by bird formation okay reproduction by bird formation example we have yeast yeast okay there is a unicellular organism like yeast okay there is a unicellular plant like you know yeast reproduces by body for example let me draw it so that you will be clear more about it. Let me draw it once. Suppose this is your no yeast is your yeast. So then here is our nucleus. And slowly what happens? The bird will be pumped out here. This small bird will be pumped. Beauty. Bird. Bird. Bird formation. Bird formation will be taking place there. And this nucleus which is here inside that will also start dividing slowly. Then in the next step, then that in the next step, this this uh, then this nucleus will be divided into two. Then in the next step, what happens is that uh, So that way, two, two, daughter, east. Okay. So that way, by body also, a uh, plant can reproduce. All right. So this usually happens in a uh, unicellular organism like east. Then third we have, we have by fragmentation, by fragmentation. Fragmentation, 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 but by fragmentation. So, in which what we see is that reproduction, reproduction by breaking, by breaking off, by breaking off into a number of fragments, number of fragments okay example we can see spiral bagel spiral you can see 
spiroguide. All right. See, third one is by fragmentation. Another asexual reproduction uh, that can be seen in the plant is fragmentation. The method is of fragmentation in which a parent organism breaks up into number of fragments. From each fragment, a new individual organism is formed. For example, spirogyra. So what happens that spirogyra, when it grows up and has to reproduce, that time it will, you know, break up into number of fragments. From each fragment, a new spirogyra will be formed. Okay, it's something like that. Spirogyra, which is something like that. Okay. So it's like this. So when it when it is mature, there will be fragmented also. I mean, from here, from here, from here, three spirogyra are formed. This is your fragmentation. One of the third method of the asexual reproduction in plant is fragmentation. Then we have, then we have, uh, we have. We have number four. Number four, we have uh, we have spore formation. This spore formation. This spore formation. Okay. So in spore formation, what happens is that in some plants, okay, some high plants like you know mosses, okay, and uh, uh, mosses. You see, then your ferns. All right. So in the in in, in them, what happens is that when they are matured, all right, the spores are formed. What are spores formed? Is that powdery substances? Okay, powdery substances are formed on the leaves. All right, then uh, then when the wind blows, that time these powdery substances are blown off to the different places, and wherever that powdery substance is fallen. There it grows into a new plant. Okay, so example we call it, you know, your ferns. Okay, ferns, mosses. So there, this spore formation can be seen. All right, ferns. As I said, ferns, which we call uh, in Nepali, we call it, you know, uh, we call it uh, in Nepali, uh, we call it uh, unyu jatiya plants. Okay, unyu, unyu, and also mosses. Okay, so there, this you know, spore formation can be seen where male and female plants are not needed from one plant itself, from one single parent itself. You know, the number of you know plants or mosses can be formed. First, the spores are formed. Suppose this is the you know the leaves. This is the leaves. So here in the leaves, this a, a kind of spore can be seen. Brown spore can be seen where the spores are formed. The spores are Formed, right? Spores and forms. Okay, when the wind blows at that time, these spores will be formed up to the different places, different places where the because from the, the new plants that grow. That is called you know, spore formation. Then we have got then we have number five, we have uh vegetative, vegetative, vegetative. Propagation or vegetative, vegetative propagation. All right, vegetative propagation. Here, uh, reproduction, reproduction by means of vegetative, vegetative parts. What is it, parts? Such as such as stem, all right, leaf, and root, all right. See, vegetative propagation, reproduction by means of vegetative parts. Okay, they, they are going to use their parts itself. From the part only, the new plant is formed. Where again, we don't see the you know, union of male and female ones. Where no male and female. No plants are needed out here from the single parent itself using these parts for stay, leaf, and root only. The new plants will be formed. 
so that is your vegetative propagation. So let us see with some examples by stem, by stem, by stem, by stem. We can see uh, some plants, you know, common grass, common grass, okay, mint, etc. So common grass, mint, you know, they reproduce by stem. For example, suppose, suppose this is this is your say this is your strawberry. So when they grow, when they grow mature, though occasionally what happens is that they will be broken up here in between. All right, and this will lead the individual life and this will lead the individual life. So from this we can see at least two or three you know, new plants being formed. So this is you know by stain. Besides this artificial uh, artificial vegetative propagation can also be done by using the stem cutting method that we can see in the rose also you must have seen rose. Okay in the rose also we take a short stem containing some Exhibited bars or some leaves, and if you show that or fix it in the fertile soil, and over the course of time, there at the base, whichever which whichever, whichever course is in the fertile soil, contains some adventitious roots, and after one or two months, it can be transplanted into the another place. Okay, so that way, you know, uh, using the stem also, we can artificially, you know, propagate the plants. That is artificial, life, which will be discussed afterwards. Then ginger, we see ginger, ginger being a modified stem also reproduced by means of the stem only. Alright, that's all about your basic propagation by stem. Then we have by, by, by leaf. So another basic propagation uh, we see being taken place by means of the leaves. Okay, example we can see in bryophyllum 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 plant ok so this bryophyllum plant is a special type of plant which reproduces from its leaves ok it's like this let me draw it once ok so it's like this so from the every from every nodes of the margin, the new birds are formed like that. B U D as birds, no? Birds are formed like that. From every node of margin, the new bird is formed. Alright? New bird is formed. Then this bird, whenever it has enough you know, roots in it, then they will fall off here. They will fall off here. They will fall off down there. If the place down there is very fertile, they will grow into a new plant or a new plant. So that way, the reproduction can be seen in this particular type of plant called bryophyllum by means of leaves. All right. Then we have we have now vegetative propagation by root. Vegetative vegetative propagation by root by means of root. Okay. So that can be seen in sweet potato. Sweet potato, we call it Saharhanya in Nepal, sweet potato. So in sweet potato also, we see the roots which are swollen up, okay? And why it is swollen up is, it is because of the storage of root in it, alright? So from its root, a new individual sweet potato is formed. That means the vegetative propagation that we are seeing out there by means of the root, alright? So this is all about the methods of, you know, of sexual or vegetative propagation or vegetative reproduction in plants. Alright? Now we will see the advantages and disadvantages of vegetative propagation. Advantages and disadvantages of vegetative propagation. First we will talk about advantages of vegetative propagation. Advantages of asexual or or Vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation. 
Then you can go by yourself. Alright? Okay. So this basically provides some or asexual, basically provides some asexual reproduction or asexual or basically provides some has both sides. That is, it has got advantages also, disadvantages also. First, we'll see advantages why basically propagation is good. Why do we go for basically propagation? Why do the farmers sometimes go for basically propagation? Okay, when they are going for the cultivation in their field. Okay, why it is? So there are number of you know, advantages. We have got four advantages out here, which will be discussed now. Number one. Number one. Uh, now, uh, this vegetative propagation uh, can be done in shorter period of time. That means it takes shorter period of time. Shorter period of time. Okay? It is done in, okay. in shorter period of time. In shorter period of time. Number one. Shorter period of time. Compared to the, compared to the sexual reproduction, this asexual reproduction needs a short period of time. Alright? Number one. Number two. Uh, number two. What we can see is that new plants, uh, new plants, new plants can be spread very easily in a small area. Okay? New plants, whichever the new plants are formed from this method can be spread very easily in a small area. New plants plants spread spread very fast very fast in the in a small area okay new plants spread very fast in a small area and number three number three it is a sure method it is a sure method that means uh, by means of vegetative parts, by using the vegetative methods or the plants vegetatively, you know, produce uh, produce certainly there is a, it is a certain process, okay, because the plants are using their own parts, they are using their leaf, they are using their stem, they are using their spores, okay, they are using their roots. So if the mother plant is there, if the parent plant is there, definitely the vegetative propagation is taking place. It is a very certain, it is a very sure. Okay, whereas in case of sexual reproduction, the process may not be certain sometimes because uh, the uh, pollination has to take place there, the pollinators have to be transferred from embryo of one plant to the other plant. So, you know, it has to depend upon the, you know, uh, some pollinating agents also. So, it is not that certain, it is not that sure, but compared to that, this vegetative propagation is a very certain process. Alright, then number four, we have the parental characters. Okay, whatever the good characters the parent plant has can be retained, can be retained in the new ones. Okay, that means good characters, good characters of a uh, Parent, parent, plant are retained, are retained. By this method, the good characters of a parent plant can be easily retained. Okay, for example, sorry, for example, uh, let's see, suppose, uh, let's talk about the orange plant only, because orange plant can be uh, reproducing by both the methods, asexual and sexual also. Usually, naturally, sexual method is there, but artificially, uh, you know, with the intervention, you know, the orange plant can be propagated by using the stem cutting method also. Okay, so if you are using the stem cutting method, so that will spread, you know, that will produce more, you know, more orange plants in certain period of time, and also it gives you the production. Very, uh, in a very short period of time only, like for, uh, in 4 to 5 years only, it starts giving you the production. But whereas, if you are going for the sexual reproduction, if you are, you know, trying to cultivate it, if you are trying to, you know, produce it by the sexual methods, methods through its seeds, so, you know, it takes long time and to have the production also, it takes 14 to 15 years. 
So that's the disadvantage it has. But whereas in this method, you know, we don't need to wait for that long time. And also, the good characters of the you know plant can be obtained. Like in this case of you know that orange plant. Suppose the mother plant is very good. It gives you the very good you know production, and the fruit is very good, juicy, large sized. So the same uh, quality can be obtained in the in the inner series of things also by using the cutting stem cutting method. All right. So these are the you know advantages of this you know this uh, vegetative propagation we have. But in the meantime, it has got some disadvantages also. Let us talk about some disadvantages the vegetative propagation has. Some disadvantages. It has got some disadvantages also. So what are the disadvantages? Number one. Number one, plants are all identical. Okay, seeds, plants are identical. Since plants are identical, since plants are identical, you know, there is a chance of the damage of the plants in the entire field. Okay, because the plants which are produced by the vegetative propagation have got the same genetic pattern because they are grown by using their spores, they are grown by using their stems, their leaves, you know, genetic pattern is the same. Suppose in a certain plot of plant, you have been growing, suppose, thousands of seedlings, by any chance one disease comes and affects one plant in that plot, since it has got the same genetic pattern, it will damage the entire crop. Alright, so that is the disadvantage. Which means, since plants are identical, uh, uh, disease, disease spreads very fast. Disease spreads very fast and damages, damages the entire field. Alright, that is one of the Disadvantages it has got. Number two, that uh, dispersal of the plants cannot be naturally taking place. Dispersal of the plants, you know, the taking away of the plants from one place to other place doesn't naturally take place in this case. For example, you see bryophyllum, we talked about bryophyllum before, bryophyllum plant. So uh, the new birds are formed on the leaf itself. Number of New birds are formed on the single leaf. When they all come into the same place and they grow there, what will happen is that you know they will be they will be having a lot of you know uh, competition for getting the water, getting the uh, suitable soil, getting the you know the uh, you know uh, sunlight. So overcrowding will be there, and the offsprings, the new plants, become very unhealthy or weak. All right. So this is the disadvantages it has. Got. All right. My dear children, so today we have just finished the vegetative uh, sexual reproduction in, I mean, uh, reproduction in plants, which are two types, that is asexual and sexual. Today we have just finished the asexual reproduction, different modes of asexual reproduction that we have finished today. And uh, uh, so in the next class, we'll do the uh, sexual reproduction in plants, all right? So before I end the session, I'll give you some home assignment that uh, I think oh, uh, I hope that you people will do it. So once the school resumes, you will come with the, the uh, uh, with with all the home assignments done. All right? The home assignments I'll give you. Just please note down. Please note down the home assignment. I think you are there with the book. I hope you are there with the book open. So number one question you write, draw the following home assignment, home work. Number one, draw the following draw the following. Okay, so what you have to draw is I'll just show you. 
what you have to draw is you have to draw binary fusion in bacteria no more binary fusion in bacteria okay. number two you can do uh, uh, bryophyllum leaf bryophyllum leaf with axillary birds alright and number two question number two question uh, define define what you have to define is uh, you define reproduction what is reproduction definition of reproduction second binary fission binary fission Okay, it is not clear. I will be right here. Number one, reproduction. Binary fission. Binary fission. Then, fragmentation. Fragmentation. Then, now the question write the advantages and disadvantages of vegetative or asexual reproduction. Alright, so number one homework is draw the following. You know that this is uh, number one is your binary fission in bacteria. Number two is bryophyllum. Here you can see page number 16. Here this is the diagram that you have to draw. Then number two, number two, we have got define the following terms. You just have to define reproduction by fission and fragmentation and number three question that you have is write the advantages and disadvantages of vegetative or asexual reproduction all right so this is what you have to do it so if there is any confusion if there is any confusion you want to uh, you know clear all the doubts from the portion of the chapter talked you can contact me on this number this is my number 97 Triple three one nine nine zero one. All right, it's nine seven triple three one nine nine zero one is the number on which you can you you can contact me if there is any problem. I hope you all have understood. If it's not clear, you can contact me or whenever the school resumes, that time we can have a talk over it and whatever the doubt is there, that can be clear. Thank you so much.